Hello and welcome, my name is Jonathan Ringer and today I'm going to be packaging up this utility called Copier, or Copier. Um, a contributor on Discord said that he was having issues packaging it. Uh, this is a Python CLI utility and I'm going to go through the process of me packaging this and how I would go about doing so. So let's begin. Okay, so first I would like to just check and see what it looks like the dependency tree looks like and so you can see here there's actually a pretty extensive list as to what it expects to be available uh, most of these should be available in Nix packages uh, one thing that is kind of nice though is that since this is a python application we should be able to kind of pin these dependencies as we need um, and what i mean by that is that normal python packages that are to be used as modules generally they can only have one version available for a given Python interpreter version. The reason for this being is that uh, when you expose it in different environments, uh, you can only really use one version at a time, uh, at runtime. Because if you have something like import NumPy, it's going to be resolving the same way regardless of where it's being imported from. And so then only one version of NumPy will ever be uh, imported. And so then we need some way to have coherency. And how we do that is just enforcement within Nix packages that only one veil one version is available at a time uh, for a given Python interpreter. Um, okay, uh, now that I got that spiel out of the way, uh, let's get to packaging. Um, so here, uh, this is going to be for a CLI application, which is for templating, if I remember correctly, for rendering project templates. Okay, so let's find it a home within Nix packages. Uh, if we go into packages. Applications seems like a good one. And then let's do. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not. Come on, da, da, da. We could also do miscellaneous. Uh, it's kind of a cop out. I don't really like that one. Uh, definitely not shells, not tools. Uh, we could also do tools. And then in front system miscellaneous. Yeah, okay, I'll do tools miscellaneous. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so how I would go about doing this though is I'm gonna do Nix template, um, and then I will just do something to the effect of uh, Python. We're in the Nix packages repository. Uh, I want to do from URL. Um, let's do this. Uh, we'll do from URL. This will just pull in some more information. You should get my information. And then uh, P name is going to be copier. And then we want it at the path of packages, tools, miscellaneous, copier. Okay. Um, going to just copy that. And then in packages top all packages let's go to copier copy does that no that's uh here we go this looks good okay so we'll paste what we got from the command line and let's move forward uh if we go into the file that i just created um this is what the from utility kind of shows uh it looks like i need to fix a bug here because this didn't get substituted correctly um, but the, the URL was copy your org, or copy your org, and then copy it like that. Uh, this is not going to be a package, this is going to be an application. Um, you can read up more on the difference between them, but the main thing is that applications are meant to be used as like a mainline utility, and then a Python package is supposed to be used as a module. So like, be consumed by something else and we'll probably be packaging some of these missing dependencies as a Python package so I'll just wait for those um, to get done. Yeah. Um, why do I have fetch pipey here? Uh, 
I think this picked up the wrong, had the wrong logic, because that's all wrong. Okay, um, let's make this a little bigger. Let's build up here. Uh, fetch from GitHub, that's correct. Cuddle without, yes. Okay, um, first issue is going to be that this is from Python 3. And then I'm just going to do with Python 3.packages for now. Uh, we'll probably have to change that later on. Um, the main reason being that we should be grabbing from, uh, we'll probably be having to pin things. So we, we'll need to apply an overlay to the Python package set before, uh, the f before we're done with this. Okay. So now we get to the one, uh, the first issue is that no such file, uh, a directory. So set up .py, uh, this is the first issue dealing with something that's Python specific. Uh, right now what it's doing uh, is it's defaulting to uh, format equals setup tools. And the setup tools toolchain, I'm not really sure what to call it, um, pack packaging tool set, uh, is looking for a setup.py. Uh, this is the normal entry point for like a setup tools installation method. So for the longest time before PEP 500 something, whatever, which introduced alternate uh, tool chains, which now we have like uh, Flit and Poetry but before then, um, it was just setup.py. And then there's a bit of a history before then too. Uh, there was disutils and then easy install and whatever. No one uses those anymore. Anyway, um, so we want to change this to PyProject. And this will use the poetry tool set to then build the package. And then now we get into the issue of dependencies missing. So here you can see no, it's just pipey. But right now, no module named poetry. Um, and I'm going to look at their pipe project just to see whether or not poetry. Is it a. Okay, so it's just the, the tool that's needed. So let's go back here. Uh, the reason why I don't pull this out of the Python 3 package set um, actually this this might be coming. So Python three dot packages. Okay, so there's a there's a poetry Python module, and then there's also a poetry CLI application. And I just want the CLI application, but with the with syntax, it's going to be shadowing the the top level one. So I actually don't want to use that here. Uh, actually, since it wants some module name. Okay, so now we get into the weeds, which is like Jinja. Um, and so I'm just going to copy all these and then kind of shape them back into where they should be. Okay. So here, piece it in all the And then with Python 3 dot packages. Uh, so Colorama I know is available with the Nix packages. I don't know if that is. I'm not sure why I keep doing semicolons. It's not a valid. Uh, here, so to do ranges like this, so like this is only needed if it is in a Python um, version that's younger. 
Uh, then what I would want to do is something like this, where it's lib um, lib dot optionals, and then inside of here it'd be Python three dot Python older. So like, is Python older than three dot eight? Uh, then I would want to do the import lib metadata. Um, however, since we know that the default version of Python 3 with the next package is this 3.9 right now, uh, I'm just going to forego this. And so then anything where I see that it's in the bounds that's not applicable to 3.9 or later, then I'm just going to remove. Okay. So, Jinja, it's going to be spelled like that. Iteration YouTube should be labeled like that. Um, I can actually test whether or not these are available in Nix packages by just doing REPL here, loading the, the Nix packages REPL, and then seeing Python 3 packages, and then something like make docs. So I'm going to have to package all these make docs materials. And this might be a little bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, packaging should still be available. Path spec. That looks fine. Actually, path spec. What version are you? 0 0.9? That's fine. Bum bum. 1.7. That looks good. Gigantic 1.8. Pigments is definitely that polyamyl. I fixed those before. Uh, polyamyl include is not available, so I'll s probably start with polyamyl include and then let's see, questionary that is there. Python 3 Okay, awesome. So it looks like I need to do three potential packages. I guess I didn't see if. Ninja. Ansible filters needs to be there. So this looks like it might be an iteration utilities. Do I? Are you there? No. Holy crap. Okay, so there's about five uh, five utilities which I need to to do. So I'm just gonna clean up the original file real quick before I move on. And then okay, uh, that looks okay. So the the ones that we were missing were Pyamel. Come on, that was fine. Passback was fine. These three, the second ginger one, integration utility, and Duma. Okay, so let's begin. I guess. Um, this is probably going to be the biggest pain point is that if you are adding something new to Nix packages, um, and then you kind of need to package each one of them individually, at least for Python. Uh, if you're coming from somewhere like Rust, uh, then we just kind of delegate all of this to Rust, um, and we able, we're able to vendor the dependencies, and this is similar in Go. Um, but in Python, generally, we need some, uh, what's the word? Uh, manual grooming. Uh, there's a lot of packages within the Python ecosystem which just don't have great release management. Um, and then also what I mentioned earlier with the coherency issue is that we can't really expose uh, all of the packages because exposing them uh, creates creates potential uh, coherency issues if we have multiple versions. So we can't just kind of have major minor versions of everything everywhere. Okay, um, so let's do another one. So Python, and then let's do pyp.org slash Duma. Did I spell the right? Do not. So apparently this thing, uh, at least it's relatively up to date. But uh, good to me. Uh, 
Python, we want next packages. Is required. Ah, this is a yeah. Okay, p name. Uh, do on my. And then Python packages, top of Python packages, yep. Um, do ABCDEFG right here. Let's go see what's in here. Um, packages. This also is Project Toml. Okay, here Python packaging import lib. Awesome. These should be easy. Uh, the thing though, when you're packaging Python packages for Nix packages, is that now we're parameterizing over multiple uh, interpreter bounds. So I mentioned earlier that like we could discard something like import lib metadata, but that is now relevant again, and we will need to um, take into consideration that uh, down here too for the dev dependencies this will be for testing uh, mostly uh, for coverage and stuff like that we don't really care about tox isn't really needed because it parameterizes over the interpreter versions and nix already kind of does that um, the ones that we probably do need to care about is pytest and any plugins that they have so flick8 might have some plugins and a few others but um, my pie is probably relevant as well okay Uh, so that was packaging and import lib metadata. Packaging, import, oh, as I mentioned earlier, so we we'll want to do something like this. Optionals, uh, Python, Python older, 3.8, and then we want uh, import Okay, um, we need Python. Uh, actually, we can do just Python older now that I think about it. Uh, since this is in a Python package set, uh, that should also be exposed at the top level. So we can do Python older here, then import lib, metadata, then we also need packaging. Uh, for me personally, it's kind of just stuff where it's kind of like stuff that helps us like metadata uh, dependencies for the packages and then any dependencies that, that get consumed. Um, but you can do it however you want. Um, as long as, yeah. Uh, and then I would usually alphabetically sort the dependencies. Um, the reason for this is just if, uh, let's say it's a commonly used package of yours, then uh, maybe you did some changing on, changes on one branch and someone else did some changes. If there's ever merge conflicts, then like one potential area where there's usually like very prone to error is um, these top input parts. And so if they're sorted in some kind of like unambiguous way, then usually it makes conflict resolution a lot easier. Okay, um, with that though, licenses, what is your license? Uh, MIT. That looks correct. That looks correct. Okay. So next build. Okay. Um, this is the the first issue. Is that it looks like uh, their source distribution doesn't actually export any tests. So what I'm going to try first is going to go to GitHub. This is a valid Python package, by the way. If you want to consume it as is, then that should be fine. Um, here, we're just kind of trusting that the um, the maintainer for this package is doing their due diligence and testing it. And the thing, though, with the Nix packages is I mentioned the co coherency issue earlier. One of the most common ways is just to substitute out the pinned version bounds um, for some people that are overly constrictive on dependencies that they reference. Um, and so then with the Nix packages, we'll kind of just patch those over and just say, nope, just take whatever Nix packages want. However, on that end, 
is that we then want some unit tests to verify that we didn't actually fundamentally break the package. Like we want some co code coverage. Um, so here, I'm going to do a fetch from GitHub. Um, empty. Oh my god, I'm not going to be able to spell this. Okay. Uh, repo equals. Does he cut his release? He does. What? Why would you put dates in it? It's not relevant to a version bound. Oh, okay. All right. The tag at least doesn't have it. Okay. This is just the header. Oh. Oh. Okay. I was about to get real angry. Okay. Let's make this shot invalid. What do you not like? You don't like. I'm using things that don't exist. Okay, so Oh, right, right, right. Uh, there it, it's going to set up tools route, but that doesn't exist. No poetry. Okay, Um, you might be asking, why do I put poetry in native build inputs while I propagate the others? Uh, the reason for that is that I want to ensure that poetry is not being exported. So like poetry is only relevant for us to actually build the Python wheel and then unpack it into side packages. After that, we don't really care about poetry. So native build inputs is used for the build, but then not propagated down the line. So uh, all of those dependencies that I had to bring in earlier for the poetry, this is just for poetry, um, then that won't be exported after I build the package. Okay, um, poetry, but tests aren't, uh, tests aren't still being ran, mm, so then that's an issue, so we will remedy that. Uh, the most common way of doing this is the pytest check hook. Uh, essentially, this is just pytest, but then some nixification that just makes it easier to use. So, check inputs. Pytest check hook. And when we run it again, uh, it will build the wheel, install it, and now we get here. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. So there was only one method which failed. Um, and the failure seems to be file not found. No such directory or file. Do not mean. Okay, so what this says to me is that they try to execute uh, their, their script. Um, and so then all I really want to do here is just in the pre-check. Uh, before I go to actually run the, the test case, I just want to export the path uh, with where the binary should be installed, uh, installed. So export path equals the previous path uh, plus the out slash bin direct directory. Um, and that sh should allow for the pytest to then find the command. Okay, so now tests are being ran and run successfully. Um, Um, okay. Just make a little note why I do that. And everything else is pretty pretty vanilla. Um, okay, yeah, going on to the next one. Uh, what I would do now is uh, start building up my branch. So package, what are we packaging in? Oh yeah, copier, okay. Here, top level, Python packages. And then, uh, actually, let me just do it this way. Uh, nope. Git add. Okay, it didn't know that I that I initially wanted that. So here, um, just name this Python three packages that uh, do not my init at one dot seven dot zero. There we go. Um, so one down. 
So let's go back to copier default. And let's just say this one is done. That's now available for us. Uh, so next one, iteration utilities, just like the last one. Okay, copy this. Go into, should be in my, nope. Um, top, I've on packages. That's right. Uh, and, okay, yes, that's correct. Iteration utilities. Did I misspell that? Hmm. Oh, I'm missing an I. God. Ah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, iteration utilities. Let's go in here. Doesn't like my license. Iteration utilities. And I did it again. License. License meta. Uh, Apache license two. So in next packages, this would be the AL uh, um, ASL two zero. Okay, I'm just gonna comment this out right now because I don't know how they're actually packaging it. Cannot find. This concerns me. This probably means that they just have wheels. Yep. Oh, no, they have a source disk, it's just underscore. Okay, um, and so if you ever do, uh, one thing that we try to adhere to within the next packages ecosystem is pep for, oh, something? Uh, normalization of package names. Essentially it should just be um, kebab case. So lowercase with dashes, there should be no underscores. Um, any type of punctuations like dots, uh, or anything else that you would see. Uh, it should be replaced with dashes uh, or tax if you're from the Commonwealth. Anyway, um, but yeah, so if you ever see that, uh, then this this is the proper way. So what we need to change here is p name equals iteration utility. Why does that look weird to me? Ah, oh, whatever. Um, Remove this p name, which is no longer relevant. Uh, now this is looking for simple pytest. So they have a pytest runner, but it's not able to find it. So uh, this might be just worthwhile for me to go to their GitHub and see what they expect. Uh, so they use a setup.py, so this is the setup tools, and that makes sense because it just automatically started trying to go. This does have a native extension though, so um, yeah, we'll have to package this into Nix regardless because now it needs to build and link against stuff, most likely. So um, that actually should be mostly taken care of. Do, do you have actual dependencies? Or are you just the natively compiled thing? I don't know what you actually do. But maybe you don't? Python, test regard, py, 
extras required. Extras should only be if they have the square brackets. That looks fine. Okay, so it looks like this might have nothing here. Then let's do a pytest check hook. Uh, check inputs equals pytest check hook. Yeah, so I guess it just compiles a bunch of C, and then that's mostly it. No file directory found for test. And that's probably because, so if we go here and we do the source, uh, we should get a tarball. Uh, if we look at uh, what they have here, so we go into iterations.utility. Um, yeah, they don't export a test directory in their source distribution. Um, ah! <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, let's go back up here. Um, and so the reason why I make a big stink about people not exporting tests is that it's pretty common that if you export tests that you, and you expect someone to build that source code, that you should also export your tests. And that serves as a test suite to ensure that their packaging of your software is correct. Um, so please, if you ever do, um, and this is, is considered a good new best practice and, um, I don't remember the article, but they, I don't know. I'm, I've read it many years ago, but essentially they made the case for always exporting tests if you export so source. Anyway, fetch from, uh, GitHub. Uh, which, which tab? And then. We want like this. This is the repo name. Do they do revisions, please, for the love of God? Okay, they do. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. We're just fetching from GitHub directly without having the PyP S this, whatever. So, yeah, there we go. Wow, that is 1,200 tests. Uh, amazing. That's probably one of the... <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, my hat's off to the, uh, the maintainer on that one. Um, so one thing that I would like to see here, though, is I would like to enable this Python imports check. Uh, I just don't know how their module structure is set up, so I'm just going to look into their outputs here. So they have iteration underscore utilities is the top level module name, and then everything underneath that. Okay, so here um, we just want this to be underscore, and then when we build it again, Okay, um, and then prior to that check phase, there should have been a executing Python imports check phase, check whether or not the following things can be imported. Um, the reason why this is important to me, I mean, we ran the test suite, so it's less important. Uh, the thing though, is that if there ever comes to be the case where maybe the test suite is acting up and for some reason it's just failing, um, and then, then we can always fall back on the check imports. And really what this is going to be doing uh, for us is at the very least, it's going to be going into here and it should be doing the double underscore in it, um, which then imports all of the related modules that are co-located to it. So uh, why that's beneficial is then stuff like that natively compiled. Um, there we go. utilities. Wasn't there a natively compiled extension? What the heck? Oh, because 
Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Alright. Just Vim, Vim skipped over it. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, the one thing that you saw the, in the double underscore in it was that it also imported this iteration utilities. And then that's just also just to make sure that this, this actually loads correctly. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, next one. That's now checked off. So let's get out of this, get add the Python packages, and then get commit Python 3 packages, iteration, YouTube. I did it again! 0 0.11.0. Okay. Um, Up here default. Boom, another one done. Uh, just the rest to go. <laughs> um, next template. Okay, so we did iteration utilities. Um, next one I want is Jinja to Ansible filters. This is look so weird. Unable to parse, and that's probably because this changed to principles. It's probably because the package name looks right. Unable to parse response. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's that's an issue with my next template. Interesting. Um, let's just go to where's your where's your repository, buddy? Everything's on GitHub. No, it's not. What the heck? Well, that's crap. Um, that's really annoying. Hold on. I'm just going to make a issue real quick. <laughs> Can't parse by three response. Okay, I'm just going to put this for later, um, just so that I remember it. Okay, uh, I'll get to that later. So let's do this the old fashioned way. So, um, not do this. Project name here. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Okay. Uh, I still have Python. I do. So, Jinja to get school, so that it should be right here. Okay, let's go into Jinja to school filters. And this is the blank slate default one. I just had to answer in everything else, um, which is annoying. Which is really annoying. What do you describe yourself as? Awesome. You are version not three to zero. What do you not like? 
to change. I actually don't know what your license. Oh, GPL three. So three plus or three only. Ah. Uh. Why don't you like older version? Version does not comply with PEP 440. Oh, 440 is that alternate chain one, uh, alternate build tool setup one. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do here is just build the source that will give me a next door path to the underlying tarball. Then I'm just going to unpack that. Okay, let's take a look in here since I don't know where your repository is. So set up to PY and set up to PY. Cool, you're one of those. Um, set up CFG. Ginger, uh, version five. Okay, awesome. They don't have this in their source distribution. Where is this repository? I really want to know. Where? Oh my god, so annoying. Ugh, whatever. I mean, I can fix this on the on the next side, but it's it's just really annoying. Okay, um, what was I gonna do? So we can go into here and then in the post patch phase, we can do something like uh, echo version to the version file. Um, it's not included in Estes. Ginger 2. This makes sense. Actually, um, Ginger 2 ends both filters. Set up that CFG. Ginger 2, PyAML, Setup Tools. Okay, so Setup Tools is just going to be available because our format is Setup Tools. And so then that's not going to be an issue. So the only things that we really need to bring in are the Ginger 2 and the PyAML. So Ginger 2. Okay, build test. Um, here I'm just going to do no tests included in Estes and source not available. Do check equals false. This is uh, this isn't really necessary because it obviously doesn't really fail the build but it's just like a good note to have that like hey this is a expected behavior and anyone that else stumbles upon this then yeah. Okay uh, the other thing I wanted to check too was to see what their license file was. Um, do they have and version 3 or later? So this is GPL3 plus. Uh, they're was it like six months ago, a year ago? Um, it's really big in the next community to make the distinction between GPL3 only, uh, the one that specific to version three of the license, uh, or the one that has this wording, which is any later version. So GPL3 plus. Anyway, uh, so if, if you do try to assume something where you just have GPL3, then people are going to comment, is it GPL3 only or is it GPL3 plus? Okay. Uh, blah, 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 that looks good. So, another one down. Ginger two. Three does zero. 
Okay, let's do the next one, which is... Oh, crap. Um, whoops. Okay, so uh, the one thing I forgot about here was the Python imports check. So let's look into Ansible filters. Looks like they just have it where these are all underscores. So. Okay, and let's just build to make sure that that didn't break anything. Okay, it did not get add specifically this file. Um, uh, these are shortcuts for me, but it's git commit amend no edit, and it's just whatever's in staging is going to be applied to the previous commit. Okay, um, next one. So Agenda 2 Ansible filters is now done. Make docs material. <sighs> Which one of these is probably the least pain in the butt? Uh, make docs material. Let's see here. Do you have a home page? Ooh, you do have a home page. GitHub.io though. Do you can I just get a link to your GitHub? I don't want to go to this landing page. I'm assuming this is the username, so I should just be able to do github.com slash guy slash repo. Aha! Okay, technical documentation that just works. Whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see, requirements.txt, that's a little concerning. Set up to UI, do you have the version bounds in here or is it in your requirements.txt? Actually, with open requirements, okay, it's right there. Awesome, you read this from here. Jinja, markdown, make docs. Okay, so I'll first have to do make docs regardless. And I'm assuming this is gonna be a little bit of a pain to do this, but let's get it started. <sighs> So make docs. What the deuce? Okay, I guess it doesn't like resizing while I had a line already being edited. Uh, make docs like that. This one is called make docs. So this goes from here. Fix this up. Okie dokie. So now we should be able to do what did you do not like? Probably the license. You did not like the license. Make docs default. Whoa. Wait, what? Oh, kind of cool. Oh, okay, so I guess this already exists as an application. Interesting. How old are you? I'm assuming it's the same guy. Nope, it's not the same guy. JK, LOL. GitHub, docs. Let's just make docs, make docs. Release, uh, is that the release? 1.2.3, 1.2.1. Okay, so one thing I can do, I can just move this, because they don't pin anything, so I can make this into a Python application. Okay. Um, here we go. One thing I'm just going to look up real quick is in... Here, do they do import lib correctly? No, they don't. Ah, whatever. Okay, that's fine. Um, 
So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to move this file into the Python modules because they've already done quite a bit in getting this all fixed up. Um, and I'm just going to reuse it. So, okie dokie. Uh, what this is going to look like though is, where's this located? Packages, development, tools, documentation, make docs. Cool. So I'm going to make, I'm going to remove the packages, development, Python modules, make docs that I made. And then I'm just going to move their default to that location. So now this should no longer exist. Yeah, uh, Vim's not happy. Okay. Now when I go to make docs default, I should see this. Okay, so I'm going to convert this into a package um, and then I'm going to re-expose it as an application. So Python. Uh, when we are packaging it within Python modules, we can't just do a top level interpreter. Uh, we want to do it where we have the individual uh, packages available. So I'm actually just going to take these And then I'm just going to paste them up here, remove this guy, bam, bam, bam. Okay. Sort. And let's see here. Um, Okay, we sorted these and go down. They should be all good to go. I don't see anything else. Okay, dokie. So if we do one other thing, which is, oh, I already added the entry into the Python modules, uh, the Python packages.nix. So here I should just be able to try to build this again. Uh, oh, it didn't like something. Undefined variable build Python Python. Because this is package. And then up here, we will also need a build Python package. And you did not like Python older. That's fair. And this should pass because the previous build was passing. Okay, and then all that I want to do here is then just re-export this where the old make docs used to be. So if we did something like next build the previous make docs, because I'm assuming it's a top level attribute, it's going to say that it's missing or something. Opening file, yeah, so the one that we moved from is no longer there, which makes sense. So I'm going to remove the directory that it's complaining about. Because uh, that should no longer exist. And then in the um, packages, all all packages, the make docs here needs to then point to the new one that we just moved as a module. So make docs, let's do with Python three packages and just do, actually, just, we can inherit Python 3. Point. Actually, I take that back. Uh, that looks, whatever, Python. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need to do two Python application anyways. So let's do this way. Okay, now if we try to build the top level, we should be fine as long as I can spell. And we get back what was originally available. So, awesome. Um, the The reason why I needed to do this though, the two Python application, uh, this will make a package go to an application. And why that's important is that the application isn't gonna export anything about its Python modules. Um, and so then it's able to be consumed on the path as a CLI utility, 
but it's not going to like infect an eco or infect something with its um, its Python modules and potentially create an environment where there's incompatible packages available. Okay, um, so Mox is down, and we are doing this one. Actually, let me get get ahead. Let's uh, get everything that was related to the move. So this is the removable of the old default.nix. We don't want to add that one yet. We do want to add this one. We do want to add this one. Okay. We commit. Um, docs to... Python 3 packages.make docs. Move from application to package okay um, that looks good where were we up here default um, make material I think Yeah. Okay, this guy. Well, he is a front end developer. This is a very nice looking, nice looking page. Okay. Um, I mean, it is it is a pretty looking page. Okay, uh, I'm getting sidetracked. Sorry, it's going it's going on for a little while. Okay, requirements.txt. Uh, so I was already here. Uh, so we got make docs now. We need make docs material extensions. Uh, Martown should be available. Ginger two should be available. I don't know if this is available. Pi m down. Five three pages. I am down. No, <laughs> we have like five thousand packages. I think. Hmm. Uh, what was it? Built-in dot length of live dot header names. Five on three packages. Yeah, it's like forty eight hundred packages. Like we have forty eight hundred packages and still having ad war. Uh like deeply recursively. Um Okay, well whatever. Let's just do make docs material, make docs material. They wanted this make docs material extension. Feedstock. What the heck is this? McDonald's material? No. <sighs> Twenty stars. Awesome. Well, at least it looks active. Okay. Oh my God! They have project. Tommel and a setup.py and they both got edited at the same time. Whatever. I'm gonna s assume this is the one that they actually want. Uh, this should be fine. Um, like uh, all of these should be exposed in the default builder. So this actually should take no time at all to to package. Uh, do they have tests? They do have tests. Awesome. Appreciate it. So template. Go here. Go to GitHub. Make docs material extensions.
how did I get a different? Why is this, uh, Python? Why is it pipey? Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, apparently something's not right with my next template thing. Make docs. Material extensions. Yeah, what the heck? Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna assume this time that they did not export their crap in the Estes. Uh, I mean, actually, I, I guess I can quickly verify whether or not they did. Rebuild the same thing, which is the source, tar. Um, see, make docs. They did! Oh, wow. Okay, amazing. I am. Color me surprised. Uh, I guess that's what I get for being too jaded. Is it MIT? It is MIT. Okay, this looks good. This looks good. Remove the source. Uh, no such directory because I'm at the wrong level. No module named markdown. Fair enough. Let's have that for tests. No module named material. Um, where the hell is this coming from? It's not listed here. It's not listed here. Install requires requirements project.txt. So they have requirements directory. Then they have a test.txt. PyTest coverage make docs material. Wait. Is that the one that I want to... Ah, we got a circular dependency. Okay, so make stock material wants this extension, but this extension wants that package to be available for it to test. Uh, so the correct way of doing this is just doing... No. So... Uh, testing... Uh, circular dependencies with docs material. Do check equals false. And then that should build. Let's see how this gets exposed. So we get material x and that's it. Okay. So we don't need this. We don't need that. Let's uncover this. Go here. So this will be material X. And then dot emoji. No module named material. What file is this from? Emoji? I think it actually has a circular dependency. Um, so if we go to make stock material extension, make stock material extension. So this wants this, and this package is the one that has a top level material directory with a double score under in it. Yep. Oh, that's annoying. Um, 
Okay, so this is like a strong circular dependency where the runtime dependencies, they actually require each other. Um, that's unfortunate. That's uh that's really unfortunate. Um, okay, so the issue here is that this materials extension needs materials, which makes sense. Um, but the problem though is that then this make docs material also needs those extensions. So they need each other. So you can't really build one and have it be correct without the other. Um, you kind of need them both, and that's annoying. Uh, one way around this is to have it where we could do something like this where it's like uh, you can expose a different flavor like one with that being exported and one without um, but for now I'm just gonna forego that uh, since this doesn't have an explicit install requirements on it I'm just gonna say that that, that was a mistake um, and maybe it's only used for the emoji. Who knows? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to call it close for that package. Let's get this added. Hit commit. 5.3 packages done. Make docs. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one then. Mix template. I had to make serial extensions, um, but now we can just do the make docs material, which I forgot the GitHub URL of. So, um, Python packages, make docs, material extensions should go here. So, make docs, uh, yeah, make docs, material, default. Uh, one thing that's kind of clustering everything is uh, these directories that I need. So Jinja2, docs, don't need those anymore. Okay, Majax materials, 7.3.6, is that correct? 7.3.6, that looks correct. PyP packages. Can I really need to fix the ordering of the so if I remember correctly, I ran into an issue where the workflow got corrupt. Uh, fetching stuff from GitHub didn't work with how I had it orchestrated before. Anyway. Export your tests. Do you even have tests? You do not have tests. Or do you? Sometimes it's like source. Do you have any tests? Do you, you gotta get workflows. 
build. You uh, you got some tusk in here, buddy? Infium check. With the oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't have to fetch any no dependencies, right? Is there package? No! <sighs> well, this might be the pain point where I might just call it an ending here. Uh, essentially, for me to do a Actually, do they have it where this is... Oh, okay, so the pipe distribution doesn't have me do that. No, or, God, or do they? I don't think they do, because that, that would be crazy to expect people to be able to build the known packages. What are, what are we doing here? Where's this package consumed? I'm just reading stuff from the package JSON. I'm assuming that they're just lazy and don't want to. Well, maybe lazy is not a good term. Maybe they just want to centralize location with all that information. Okay, that I don't have too many, too many issues with. Okay. Alright. Uh, okay, I thought I would have to do like a node package build. That would have just been outside of the scope. Uh, <laughs> okay. Ninja material, which package is that? Oh, this guy. Gosh darn it. Well, let's get these. Okay, um, so we need to do this guy, the pim down extensions. So, next packages, another pim down. So, ip.org slash front of the projects. Project. Pim down extensions. Okay, so it pulled everything correctly. Let's boom. Right uh, what might be easier is if I do. Go here, go to the GitHub. They have both. Do you though? Because you need Markdown. Lying to me, buddy. Uh, install records. We open rec. What the hell's rec? Oh, it's the function. Cute. Requirements. Okay. Oh. 
It's just one. It was just one. Ah, God. Now I feel stupid. Uh, no module named Pim down. Awesome. Which is coming from this import check, and this might be incorrect. No module. Test. Test. Check. Let's just look there. What, what do you need for test? Tell me what you need. Pi test. Oh, it was just pi animal. God. Now I feel stupid again. Uh, coverage, uh, you can include it. It's just going to be another pi test plugin. The thing though is that we don't really care about it. Unless they're calling it into it directly, maybe? Salt diff. Diff. Why? Wow, these are some pretty pedantic tests. Okay, so instead of getting a div class pre span, whatever code test, whatever, it's just doing slightly different. And I I really don't care to I'm just I'm just gonna not not do it. Do check. That's false. Um very sensitive to Markdown. Pim down X. Awesome. Okay, what's in here? I'm just going to do the init. Okay, awesome. Uh, I'm gonna call there. Get add. Pim down extensions. Get add minus p on this guy. We do not want to do that one. We do want to do that one. So dot down extensions init at zero. Uh, another thing that's kind of concerning to me as well is their versioning. Uh, essentially, Simver fills me with faith. Everything else, essentially, eh, Calver uh, calendar versioning also is acceptable if you have a regular release cadence. But if you're doing something like this where people are consuming your packages with the API, then please, for the love of God, do Simver. Like, helps communicate so much about your package. Okay. Um, Where was I going with this? Let's go to the next one and mark down materials. We should have all of these now and let's move forward with that. So mark down materials. Let's see here. This here. Oh, thank God they pre-built that node stuff. Jesus, that would have... That would have sucked. Okay, what the deuce? Okay, so it's saying no matching distribution found for MicDocs greater than 1.2.3. 
Um, oh, I think the reason for this is that this is 1.2.1. Yeah, okay. So here, uh, I'm just going to do the next update command. Boom, done. Okay, let's just make sure that this still builds. It does not. Awesome. Uh, attribute module has no dummy plugin. What the heck? What do you want from me? Coverage flake, that's not it. Uh, dummy plugins, is there... Uh, that's a PyTest plugin. So they may be exposing... Isn't it config something? I don't see anything that's okay. Plugins up here. I need this. Conftest.py. That's the the pytest file. I don't see it though. And I also don't see like a pytest.ini or anything like that. I see it talks. But, uh, let's just take a look in here. Okay, well, I'm getting tired of this, and it's probably somewhere in here, but I'm starting to not care. So, what I'm going to say here is... Why do you want to copy options? I I don't I don't care. Okay. Um so one thing that I can do here is this is in MakeDocs. So let's go back over to MakeDocs. Uh MakeDocs default.nix. And we're using PyTest check hook. Oh, look at this. Uh, they have it where we remove one. Okay, disabled test pass, I think is the, is that right? Disabled test. Test paths. Yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Disabled test paths equals Uh, what this will do is for the PyTest check hook, it will essentially just, uh, it will disable trying to even import that. At least it should. Uh, if this doesn't work, then I'm just going to remove it. Okay, so let's go up to maybe a smarter person than I did this originally. Can't mistakenly try to import something from a path that doesn't exist. Ooh, wonder why that failed. GitHub deploy test. That looks not like what we want in an offline test case. Wow, these are just. Actually, now I'm kind of thinking. Was removing that test the reason why I was failing? No, no name. Okay, so localization. I don't care about doing that one. Make sure I save this. Okay, it's scrolling up so that this can kind of output stuff before it gets bad. Um, 
build test. Don't care about build tests. Also don't care about this. And the search paths, whatever, I just, I don't. Um, the search paths, those are the ones that we were looking at earlier, but it looks like, yeah, they're just related to the makedocs.config plugin. Um, uh, what's the term that I'm looking for? Uh, Tylist fixture, and it just doesn't seem to be available. But whatever, that's that's an upstream. Okay, git add python 3 packages dot make docs and then we bump this from 1.2.1 to 1.2.3 Okay, what was I doing before? Make docs material Looks like it's going well. Sh the stripping phase is part of the fix up phase, so this is pretty close to done, if that's the case. Material default. Uh, most likely, this PyP is not shipping any tests. Make docs material. No module. Oh, stupid. To disable that before I ran the test before this. I, I don't know the structure. I guess I could look up the structure. So make docs material. If I go here, material. Just under material. Um, which kind of feel like your package name should correlate with the module name more, but what do I know? I just package stuff all the time. I'm just I'm just gonna call it good. I don't. Um No tests exported and as this source is unusable because it requires no modules and pretty much anyone who's gonna review this does not want to incur the pain. Okay, do check your host false. But one more time, even though it takes quite a while, I just want to make sure that it's not stupidly broken. Okay, other than that, I think this looks pretty good. Oh, um, typo here. No tests exported in S test. Source is unusable because it requires building the modules.
Okay, let's add this. Git add minus p. Nope. Yep. Commit five point three packages. Dot make docs material init at not that. Um, seven dot three dot six. Okie dokie. Um, seven dot three dot six. We got make docs material. What was I doing? What was I even packaging in the first place at this point? This one? Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah. <sighs> Hooray! Okay, this one's done. God, that took way more than I was expecting it to. Okay, make docs, mermaid to plugin. Mermaid. Wait, did this say two? Mermaid. Mermaid two. Why? Did I spell that wrong? I did. This is a plugin that interprets mermaid graphs. Fun. That is a really long read to be. Anyway, congratulations to them. Okay, so they do setup.py, setup.py, readme, setup, where's your install requires this, looks. If these two are for testing, why are they in install requires? There's a test requires. Ah. Uh, whatever, doesn't matter. As long as it's not circular dependencies, I don't really care. Also, setup tools greater than or equal to 18.5. That's ancient. Oh crap. Is this available? Oh thank god. Okay. Whew. Next template. Let's do this. Make docs mermaid two. Uh Make dots two in two in. Um, okay, so let's apply this now to top Python packages dot next. Um, docs mermaid would be here. What license do you have? You have the MIT license. Not sure why that didn't. Also, what version are you? I feel like a bunch of this crap. Is, nah, whatever. That is the latest version. Okay, Magnox maintainers. That looks me. That looks good. Let's just get this out for now. Actually, I had the source code up here first. So Mermaid Two would be what I want to. Fetch, let's do from GitHub. Fetch from GitHub. What's that? Pinning. Does this match? That is the question. 0 0.1.2 0 0.4 oh, God. Why do people not make tags? Well, I guess technically this is GitHub releases. 
the better question is, have you made a tag? Oh, you have. Zero and five, two, two. What is all these version numbers, though? Whatever. All right. What is it called? Dust Mermaid 2. Something I didn't like. Unknown variable, fetch from GitHub. That's completely fair. Okay, while that's calculating that, let's go look up the requirements. Zip.py here. Copy. What did you not like? Uh, call up without requirement repo because I gave it something else. And this is going to be now malformed. Okay, Mctox material, JSP Defier. We have all of these set of tools is going to be available by default, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, then let's just add this all to the top. Is there still out of order? People organize your stuff. Okay. Okay, there's no tests. Are there tests up here? There is a test. Medium, simple, super fences me. What the deuce is this? Docs that, you know, okay, all right. Uh, let's just do this then. Uh, non traditional tests. I don't even describe this. I Meaning, it looks like we have documents, like JavaScript. What the heck is this? Um, okay. Non traditional testing. Okay, I think that's good. Uh, let's just make sure this builds one more time. Okay. Uh, get add. This. Get add. Minus P. No. Yes. Get commit. Uh, I don't want. Type that again. So I'm gonna botch it terribly. Okay. Uh, what was I doing with my life? I don't remember anymore. Copier. Boom. Done. Make talk strings.
Wow, they uh, they really they doc doctor that up. Man, that is nice. Nice. Okay. Um, let's get a pie round. Dot tunnel. Ginger. Mark down. Mark up safe. Make docs. Ah, auto refs. Also, what the hell is this? TK docs. Oh, what was I doing with my life? Nix. Purple. Got them three packages. Not punk. TK docs? TK? Mm. Okay, all right, this is becoming way more than I thought it would be. It is going on like two hours of me doing this. Uh, I'm just going to call it quits here. Uh, and I'm back. I'm taking this on from another day just to kind of finish this up. Um, okay, so where I left off last was that I wanted to package this make doc strings. Uh, however, the issue was that this also has other dependencies, namely the make docs auto refs and the PyTK docs. So, let's finish this up. Make sure we pull in the home page, pipe TK docs. It's probably oh, it does have the home page. Don't know why it didn't pick it up. There we go. The license was ISC. That's one I haven't seen before. ISC lib dot licenses dot ISC. Oh. Oh, that's what it is. With it off now. What do you want? You got a project.tumble, and then inside of here, you have dependencies. As AS10. Parts. Okay, awesome. Cash property. I think this one is available. Cash property, data classes, and typing extensions should all be there. Uh, I guess those are only needed if they're less than their respective interpreter version, but. Eight. 
Okay, uh, that should be good. And then let's just bring in the dependencies, which I just mentioned. So this is going to be AS ton parts. Probably and data classes. This is a Pi Project one. PDM. Why do you want PDM? Well, that's not fun. Uh, looks like yet another one. What the heck? Why does it want? <sighs> it's part of the build system. PDM. Think like that. What the heck? Got six stars. What? Why? Why do people do this? What even is PDM? Python Development Master. It's meant to be the next generation Python. Man oh, okay, so it's like pip. If you are. Man, why do people have to do yet another package manager for, for Python? Nah. Well, it's pretty popular. I wonder if there is an application for this. PDM? No. Fun. Tell me that you don't need yourself. Build system, it doesn't say anything. Nope, never mind. It needs. It needs that. Well, fun, 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 fun. Unable to parse error, missing home page. Awesome.
A, B, C, D, E, F, P, oh, I need M, M and N, P, K, well, what do you require? Optional dependencies. Do I just see regular dependencies? Okay, it's empty. Oh, didn't get the version number. Interesting. That was simple enough. Add that, get add dash p, nope, nope, yes. PD, six. Um, okay. Now that we have packaged this, now we can get back to what I was originally trying to do, which was PYT docs. Build inputs equals PDM five seventeen. Go up here. Okay, uh, that looks like that worked. Let's do. What does this look like? PYT docs. Okay then. Try that again. Okay. Add that package, another one down. Okay. So what are we on to now? Is this the right one? Make docs? No, it's just make docs. I've already been here. We've done this. Make docs. Auto refs. Okay. Let's give 
piping. ISC Okay, needs markdown. So let's go into here, poetry dependencies, tool, poetry, poetry core. Where's markdown coming into play here? No, here we go. Python or docs. Okay. Okay, that works. Uh, I'm just gonna try to get this to work real quick with tests. They do have tests. Comp test, test plugin. Okay, so this looks like a pi test. Fetch from actually hold up. If I remember correctly, the test dependencies, dev dependencies, this looks like an absolute garbage bag. Um, okay, let's let's not do that. Let's just look at Mctax auto revs. So this should be underscore, then uh, as tested as pip. Okay. Next one, I think we're almost done. Uh, this should be the last one for make doc strings. So let's get this on the way. Next template. This one. Make dark strings. You have the license because it kind of makes sense they're all in the same organization um, don't want an emoji here there should be no ending period okay
if I had to package all these, I'm just luckily I think these are just dub dependencies. Tests looks like just pi tests, randomly sugar, x this. So pigments. Whatever. Okay. That should be fine. That should be fine. Let me just make sure that markup safe is in here. It is. That's not what I wanted to copy. Ah. Wonder why I got a different hash. That's interesting. You need a really old version of PyT kit docs. Fun. Um, so I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna try here is actually what is the version of PyT kit docs? This is 0 0.14, and in their master they. I actually have that, so chore How about this? Pipey talk streams. When was this released? 0 0.16.2 Why is this old? That's probably why we had the Sean mismatch. But I pulled it from GitHub. Is there GitHub? This is auto refs. Because their latest release on GitHub doesn't match. Man. Okay, but even this latest release is still behind. Um, I'm. It looks like they're they're just updating it. Whatever in isolation. Uh, that might not be true. This could be part of a larger PR. Um, but what I generally like to do here is just go in and then change it. So, what I mean by that is, um, do a small patch. So, here, I'm just gonna build a source, untar the source, cd into big doc strings, and then look at their pyproject.toml, and then this is in regards to the pytk docs. So this is the string that they actually have in here. 
Um, okay. And then just uh, in the post patch, I'm going to substitute in place in their project.tumble. And I'm just going to do replace this string with this other string. There we go. And then, do they have anything? No. Okay. Uh, I think that's good. There, I'm just saying, uh, please override it. I don't, I don't want to deal with the version bounds because they don't seem to be very meaningful, uh, at least in how it's being consumed. Am I done? Make talk strings. As for this, and then am I done with copier? No, I still have one more. <sighs> okay. Pine YAML include. Okay, okay, so stick this out. Pine will include. Let's take a look in here. Uh, you have the GPL3 plus. Okay, let's build you. Include. Play Amulet Include is not available. Oh, did I not? I don't think I added it. It should be here. There we go. Now there's a reference to it in the Python package. It's a uh, simple tools, simple tools, SEM git. Next build. Okay, so that's available. Uh, I guess I should just look at what is needed. So they have a setup.py, which makes sense. How does this look? Requires set of tools. Set of tools. I mean, it doesn't look like they have very many dependencies. Does this match what this has? Install requires. There should be a setup requires. Whatever. So the setup tools SEM, usually that's only needed to be used once. Um, so then we will just add that to native build inputs. It doesn't need to be exported, is what I mean. And we want it 
its little brother. I'm just going to look at the pro project of Tommel here. Setup tools, wheel is, should be available. Setup tools, as you know, with Tommel, which means that this may also need Tommel. And we already got that one. Oh yeah, probably YAML. That was... There we go. And ran tests. Awesome. Okay. And... Let's take a look at how this is done. YAML include with nothing. It's not pi yaml, it's just yaml include. What the heck? All oh, right. Uh, I should probably make this explicit. Um, I should probably make the, the testing hook explicit. Pi test check hook. Uh, the reason for this is just uh, the setup.py test command is actually deprecated within setup tools. There's probably a warning actually up at the top here, maybe? Uh, yeah, testing, yeah, running test. So testing for, via this command is, is deprecated. So you're encouraged to use a separate test runner. Okay, so now we got PyTest running the test suite, and it looks good. Nope. Yes. Two. Oh, I don't need to push it quite yet. Why did why did I need to do this? Nah, because of this. Okay. All right. Final moment of potential uh, freedom here is that this is now done, and we may be able to just do copier. Nope. Undefined thing pigments. Yes, this is lowercase lowercase. I, you know, why is that all? Yeah, gross. It's like shouting at someone. Ginger 2. Let's build a three packages. Ginger 2. You have 3.0.2, and this wants prior to. So for a major version. Uh, I'm probably just going to overwrite this because I don't want to deal with that. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just going to overwrite it, actually. So let's look at the AWS CLI default.nix, and then here's an example of overwriting packages within Python package set. I'm just going to copy that, paste it here, Python 3, override, package override, so override. And then here what we want to do is just do Ginger 2. And then we want to take the existing Jinja 2 from the Python package set, and we want to overwrite this with uh, something that's within the 2 major version. So here, let's go to PyP Jinja 2. Let's look at the release history. What was the last 2.0 release of the 2 package? 2.11.3. Need this invalid. And then in here we will want to do um, 
we want to be importing for this overlay instead of the Python 3 package set, which doesn't have the fixes in it. Okay, if everything goes correctly, this should now want to... download a new version, which it did. Okay, it's building the old Jinja version. Jinja builds, awesome. Building Sphinx for some reason? Oh, probably because it relies on it. Rebuilding material, because I think that also consumes Jinja. Okay, this might take a while. Um, yeah, I'll probably cut the video ahead a bit for this to finish. So let's get a bit ahead here. So it looks like the issue now is that Flask actually requires you to have a greater version than Jinja 2. So it might be worthwhile to see whether or not the package is just coherent with the latest version of Jinja. This is one of the issues with the Python ecosystem is that essentially everyone has like major version bumps. It Technically they're infrequently, but the, the landscape is so wide that even infrequent updates on a particular package means that there's usually quite a bit of frequent updates across many of the packages. So um, yeah, so let's instead of this instead of doing overrides let's just do a little patch phase and then in the copier here let's do ins this has been updated on master actually so their last release was 5.1.0 right Okay, and so then this is just out of date. So instead, let's actually just take from master and see how far we get from there. So um, if we want to take from a specific commit, we can. Uh, here we'll just do this. Is that, is that right? I need to, no, 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 A is right. Make the Sean valid, and then we will just want to take the date of this. So this was done yesterday, which would be the 10th of November for me. So for a version here, we would just do unstable 20, 21, um, 11, 10. Should get a new version of the copier repository. Okay, packaging. Why do you not like packaging? Because pa packaging is too old. Wow. Okay. Packaging, you have this. Packaging is needed in installing from pip. That is not the case. We do not care about that. So, I'm just actually gonna delete that. So, post patch is going to be, uh, let's do sed. That, and then we'll do the expression of, um, I think it's like this. Actually, let me just make sure there's only one instance of packaging, right? Okay, so packaging D. And 
we need GNU set if we do this. That did not work. Interesting. Um, I must be doing it wrong. Uh, set delete line continue string. Looks like I've been here many, many times. That looks about right. Oh. Right. I need to specify a file. Um, <laughs> whoops. Do it here, do it in place, and then we'll do the product of power. Okay, boom boom. You want that's in the version range. The thing this says to me is that this is, oh my god, they don't have the version number correct. Oh. Well, that's annoying. Um, so let's go fix that. So plum bum default. We do this and it's wrong. Why does this have no meta? What the heck? Also, it's all in weird order. So let's go to pipey. Let's see if they fix this upstream because their Estes is broken. Bum bum. Nope, they haven't pushed a fix since beginning of this year. No, oh, just can I just get a link to the the GitHub? How do you how do you do this? Whatever. I guess I'll add a meta meta equals with lib. Uh, description. How do you describe yourself? Shell combinators. There's also a home page, which is I think of what I just copied. Yeah. And then let's do source equals fetch from GitHub. Owner equals Tom Philiba? I don't know. Long rev equals do you at least cut your tags? This is V. Let's take this, Shaw, borrow it. Let's do this. Let's see, Pipey doesn't contain version information or package. Uh, actually, we will probably be adding test there. Let's do let's add this back down here. PyTest check hook. Change this to fetch from homepage license. MIT. What do you not like? You do not like that there's no lib. Okay. Uh, what do you not like? So there's no coverages for whatever.
How's the game pack? Interface, setup.py. Okay, so what's in your setup.py? Your setup.configuration. This should be up this. Yeah. Unrecognized arguments, cov, config. Why does that? No, that shouldn't expose that. What the heck? Install requires that's only for Windows coverage branch coverage report Wi Fi. Why does that say that's not there? Practice cover package is required. Yeah, that's what I thought I had. Didn't I add that? I test cov. Oh, I didn't list it down here. Okay. Oops. Okay, error. No module named plumbum dot version. Oh. So this is go going to the local Python files. So I'm actually kind of curious if I do do check equals false, does it correctly install the packages? So here there should be a version.py or the init should or the version should be exposed to your import boom, boom, dot version. So that is not going to be there. And it still has zero 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 on the distant info. Why does it have zero 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 on the distant info? This is probably due to a mistake on their part because I don't think they have it labeled anywhere. Nope. Nope. Did they have it in the high project on Tomo? No, right to set of tools SCM. Oh, cute. Okay. That's adorable. Okay. So what they want is native build inputs equals setup tools SCM. And then in here, there's also a uh, environment flag that you can pass, which is I think it's a uh, setup tools pretend or something like that set of tools scm pretend version um, and then what this will do is essentially uh, it will populate an environment variable within the build and then the build will be set to the version number and then this version number will then be consumed by the set of tools scm okay so why do you know like that? Undefined variable set of tools. Let's see. That's fair. And then I use the wrong dash. And now we should see Plumbum now has 1.7.0. Awesome. 
Okay, uh, great. And there should be more in here. Okay, so there is. Okay, so now if I do this with tests, some failed. Quite a bit failed. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. I don't believe in you. What's wrong with this? Command not found. SSH. Jesus. Man. Test pseudo? What kind of test was this crap? Oh my god. What the hell? Alright, let's look at their little test suite here. Do they have like integration tests or something like that? Oh my god, uh, I think I think what's happening is that their testing suite is pretty integration-like. Uh, what I mean by that is that like it expects you to have some SSH stuff pre-configured and a few other things which I really don't care to replicate. Uh, PyTest parameterize, blah 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 blah. Well, let's try this first. So, disabled test test paths. Uh, this is next top. Don't care about that. I should put the Okay, so what was the first one here? Test config, config, test home. Test local. I might just disable the test suite and say I don't care because this looks like they're doing some individual commands here. This just looks weird. And then this should have been disabled. What? Test, don't. And so much output that it actually removed it. This a because I misspelled it. Okay, only 8 fail. That's much more tolerable to me. This one still requires SSH, so... Disabled tests. Uh, let's just do note requires running SSH in a predefined way. Pseudo, I don't care about running sudo. So let's just remove everything from sudo. Test local, this program, test pgrep. Testless processes. 
You're doing PS. I'm assuming it failed to find PS. Go path, which PS. What is this from? Proc PS? Yeah, I don't I don't really care. This one wants SSH. Test setter lines slash bin slash ls. There's a plum. Pre check equals export home close tempter. Uh, that's just because this, uh, so if you ever see homeless shelter, that's because in the default builder, it actually sets home to be homeless shelter. This is just to make sure that there's no impurity going on and it's assuming some type of user, whatever. So this actually just does not exist. Um, so this is desired feature set while doing packaging, but for tests and stuff like that, if they're just writing some files somewhere, then that's, that's okay. Uh, although they should probably be using some tempter plugin, but whatever. Um, mocker that's probably because I didn't bring in the pytest mock library that they wanted which not listed there but it is listed here I think so pytest mock should fix that one Okay, and that's also because of that. Okay, so that should be all of the test cases. Why do you not like this? Expected equals 56. Oh, right. Okay, um, get add this, get hit Python 3 packages dot um, uh, fix version installation and add test. Okay, um, now what I wanted to do, which was build this cannot import name get from plumbum dot command Oh no, what is this? Command equals local module. The name of this dot command local module. Sys modules command dot name. Why is this a thing? Why 
do people feel like packaging native dependencies in Python? I will never understand. If this is, then I will probably have to do some patching to make sure that whenever it's trying to reference these commands that it's actually able to be ran. Um, actually, what was the build? What was the actual error? Check whether or not it can be imported. Copier. Line import lib. So, copier init tries to import everything from the main.py, and then the main.py tries to import git. So this is probably an issue with how I package the plumbum.command. Or the plum bum, or probably more accurately, is the plum bum is doing something that's not really kosher within Nix, and so then it's not actually able to find Git. So I'm kind of curious now if uh, if I were to expose Git as a native dependency, whether or not it would be able to find this and pass. Um, so let's go back, copy your native dependencies, Git. If I were to just use git, would you be able to find it? You would. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Um, what this means is that it's uh, the plumbum is essentially looking into the what's the word, um, environment, and then just wrapping those commands in a way that then can just be called from Python in a more ergonomic way. Um, which means that, let's try to do this, which is make wrapper args equals um, suffix path Live dot make path get and this Okay, so what I did here is I did this, which is uh, wrapping the command. So uh, kind of the issue with this is that um, this, this essentially only works if we use the copier utility as a CLI utility, which according to upstream is the intended use case. It's not meant to be as module, so I would say that this is okay. Um, but where this does come into play though is that if this ever were to be consumed as a module, essentially there's no guarantee that this line will ever be executed because they'll just be running, uh, they will just be importing the Python uh, code, but they will not be executing this wrapper script. Um, also, uh, Python does its own wrapping phase for the utilities. So uh, the, the convention here is that you do make wrapper args to kind of supply additional arguments to that wrapping phase uh, so that you don't necessarily have to double wrap something like the python will wrap it with the with the logic that i just showed because the python wants python will set this and then also 
this, and then in this little area here is just for additional MakeWrap or arguments. Uh, but other than that, that, sh that should also mean that this should work. And it does. Okay, awesome. However, this zero. Um, how do you do version here? Hmm. Is auto updated by poetry dynamic versioning. Okay, well, I can just replace this. Let's do it in place by project .toml, by project .toml. Replace zero and zero with version. Build it again. Ooh, what did you not like? Uh, raise command cannot be. Hmm. Pair metadata for wheel check logs. Did I? Is there another location where? No. Unpacking, patching sources. This is where the patching should be. Done. And copier there is also not correct as well. Um, what the heck? Why? Why do you have to be this way? Poetry scripts. Copier. Are any of these relevant? No. 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 Those are all testing tools, black eyes, or build system, poetry core, poetry dynamic versioning. <sighs> Is this available? I thought three packages. No. Ah, uh, yet another package. I thought I was done. I thought I was done. Pipey, uh, this guy. 0 0.13.1, 200 stars, cool. Is there a way to set the crap with like an environment variable?
doesn't look that way. Yeah, whatever. Let's see if this just works, which it probably won't. But whatever. Who who am I to say what is or isn't right? Next template. Go to this URL. And then we want poetry dynamic versioning. Um, poetry packages. This is poetry versioning poetry. All right, what's in your, what's in your noggin? Poetry dependencies. Python 2.9. Tommel kit. Okay. Okay. So here this was. My total kit. I'm just going to make sure that I have that. Okay, we do. Total kit, turn to two. the ordering of this. Sorting of that. Tree. What do you don't like about my face? I have to change. This is MIT. Okay, that was relatively painless. Uh, let's just take a look at what's been said here. So this is correct, so for this should be underscores. Okay. Um, No, yes. Okay, um, now that we did that, Poetry Dynamic Versioning, let's go back to the other one here. Need to build inputs, Poetry, and then Poetry Dynamic Versioning. Oh, I need to replace this if that's going to be the case. What do you have in here? You have zero. Zero. You still have zero. Ah. God. What? What? What do I need to do with you? Hmm? How, how do? How do I tell you what version to use?
can I look for what's my way? It's variable, environment variable. Well, I'm going to have them do an ask on um, able to set version for package uh, maintainers. Okay. Is this which any control software information? Uh, this will be another way to communicate the version number of the package to the build toolchain uh, or setup tools SCM. This is setup tools SCM pretend version. However, analogous feature for this package. To be clear, this is when the version is already determined, we are just what upstream has distributed. Okay. Um, I don't know if they'll get back to me in any time anyway, so uh, one thing that we could do is just have it where micrap 0, .0, 0 0.0.0 <sighs> Looks like I would need to change it in the metadata and whatever for it, but I don't. I really don't want to do that. I I can just change it here, and then at least it will output something different. So we could do post fix up, and then in here we could do uh, substitute in place. What was we have lib python or pi dot site packages. Uh, the site packages here will give me like the lib slash python three nine slash site packages. So all that we really care about is anything that's underneath that directory. So here, copy your init would be the file name, and then within that file, we will want to be replacing. Zero dot zero dot zero with version. Okay, let's build it again. Hopefully, for the love of God, this is. Invalid version. Oh, it actually consumes it elsewhere and parses it as version. Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, what we could do is take the latest stable release and then give it some extra metadata. So.
plus git uh what did I call it? Source.rev. I think right. Source.rev yeah. Um, so if this parses simver correctly, anything that, uh, so each like minor, uh, major, minor, uh, patch ver version, uh, but then if you do plus, that's supposed to be just like extra generic information that shouldn't go toward how you order the version numbers. However, it can be beneficial for telling you like a specific revision. So... Okay, it didn't air out immediately, and here we go. Copy your 5.1 plus get all that crap. Um, that's closer. Okay, uh, anyway, there, I think that's good. Okay, got a package. It has a version number, which is saying. It's not just saying 0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Um, let me just link that into the file itself. Um, So poetry dynamic version does not currently support being able to set the version explicitly as a package maintainer. Let's see. Okay. Uh, actually, since we're not doing the overlay anymore, I can just do pi plus three here, and then all references to pi, I'm just going to get rid of. So pi plus three, and pi plus three. Build it. Make sure I missed something. Probably, I did. Okay, perfect. Git add this directory, git add minus p, yep. Uh, copier init at And that's it. Uh, let me just push it up to my fork. Package copier. Oh man, how much did I package? Like 20 packages? Felt like a lot. Uh, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17 commits, technically one of them already existed, so that I guess that's only 16 new packages, one fix up of a previous one. And that's 637 lines, Jesus Christ. Um, I don't even want to review this. All right, well, whatever. Let's just take this. Um, Thought I would try my hand at packaging this. Someone mentioned they had difficulty doing so, and I would agree. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, let's do this. I did technically test it, tested if applicable. Uh, never mind, that's for Nixos tests. Yes, kind of this changed on me since last time I looked at it. Have I done a review? No, I have not. So let's go over here. SHH into one of my servers. 
Uh, next packages review PR number. Get that going. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, probably just need to see this through the end. It looks like this is just going to be taking a while. Yeah, it's just going to take a while. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, if you if you like these more casual, just me packaging stuff type videos uh, on a particular topic, just let me know, and then I can kind of record what I do in the future. Um, I was thinking about doing something maybe for also reviewing packages. I'm not sure because they're, they're, these ones are quite a bit slower. Um, like the, the content isn't necessarily immediately hosted up. So uh, they do have much slower context to them. Um, however, I like to watch YouTube videos while doing something else. So sometimes slower isn't necessarily bad. Okay. Uh, if you liked what I had, just let me know. If you didn't, also let me know. Anyway, see you guys around. Bye.